Hello everybody and welcome back to the Storm Poker Challenge at MyBet.com. My name is Dylan and in this third video, as promised, we'll be playing two simultaneous Storm cash game tables and putting into practice basically all the theory that we covered in the first two videos. At the same time, I do believe there is one final point that we need to look at concerning steals and re-steals, especially when mid-stacks or small stacks are involved in the hand. So here are the general ranges that we gave you guys in the last video and I was recently talking to a buddy of mine who is a high stakes player and a high stakes winning player. I've seen his graphs and he made a very good comment that this list could very easily be uh, far too wide of a range for most beginning and novice players, especially rec players. And for that reason, I want to just go ahead and reiterate the fact that, uh, as I said in the last video, this is just a general recommendation for those of you who are, who are getting going, and you can definitely tight that, tighten this up. For example, maybe maybe only opening as a raise, sevens are better, um, suited ace, uh, ace jack are better, uh, suited king queen there, for example, instead of just uh, any king queen. As an example of how to tighten it up there in EP, um, do the same there with middle position as you guys like. But what I would recommend is definitely after you've played a few thousand storm hands, Go ahead and run an analysis if you are using poker tracking software such as Hold'em Manager so that you know how you're performing in early, middle, uh, cutoff position on the button in, yeah, in the small and the big, and especially how you're performing in steals and re-steals, uh, three bet pots, four bet pots, stuff like that. And yeah, if you notice that there is a slight leak there or that um, maybe you're yeah, losing a little money in, in one position more than another. Then you know that may just be variance. It may just be um, yeah, hard luck. Who knows? Bad matchups. All this stuff happens, especially with such a small end. But if you are noticing that yeah, some positions are are not working out as well as the others, yeah, have a look at that. Have a look at your hand. See what you're playing. See if you can't tighten that up. Or yeah, maybe if you're yeah, like uh, like me, maybe the aggression uh, is a bit too high. Maybe you need to reduce that. Maybe it's the other way around. Maybe your aggression's too low. You need to increase it. Uh, just definitely look at your game, you know, after every few thousand hands, um, analyze where you are and see what you can do concerning your ranges and what you're playing. But again, yeah, a general recommendation here, guys, and you can tighten and widen that depending on your opposition and the reads that you may or may not have. And again, yeah, just briefly, the calling range is recommended by an article and hold a manager. And you guys can just pause the video, have another look at that, how they've defined it here for cold calling ranges, so-called flatting. And finally here, again, the few key stats that I showed you guys in the last video in case you didn't get that. Um, pause the video and just remember this uh, rule of nine here and that when you're flatting with suited ASX hands or max stretch connectors very often, you're going to be flopping. When you do connect with the flop, it's going to be a draw. And you're going to be yeah, probably facing a, a continuation bet in a lot of cases. So know that that's the difference. You know, when you're playing pocket pairs and you hit, you flop a monster, by and large, <laughs> and when you when you're playing the ASEC suited max stretch connector stuff like that, by and large, when you hit your flops, you're gonna have to peel off another card or two to have a made hand. And before we get into the lineup here on our two storm cash tables, there is again that one point that I want to look at, which I mentioned in the first video, but didn't actually go into in my pot odds calculator, which I think is very very important. Uh, it's concerning play versus mid stack or short stack players when you are a big uh, big stack player at your table and that yeah that markedly changes the the dynamic especially when they're pushing um, versus steals quite often that's something that I've been seeing quite a bit just wanted to mention that show you guys that real quickly before we actually jump into the real-time action what we've got here is a scenario where we are on the button there's been a Small blind post and a big blind post, of course. It's folded around to us, and we make a 3x steal raise from the button, irrespective of our holding. So we raise it up to 60 cents in our NL20 example, and the small blind folds, and now the call option is there for our opponent. All right, so his call, or her call, is gonna be 40 cents on a total pot of 90. She's got then 2.25 to one odds, and needs, if she's going all in, 30.8% call it to break even in the long run. With the rake, of course, it's a bit more. If she's playing then a 
mid stack here, which in yeah our scenario, the NL20 environment is gonna be $6 exactly, the minimum buy-in per table. And that is exactly 30 big blinds. So if she's already posted the big blind, she's got 580 left, all right? We raise it up, and what I'm seeing a lot is that these small stackers are then shoving directly. So it's a three bet shove for essentially 29 big blinds. That's happening a lot. You can do that very, very effectively when you are using stats. For example, if your HUD, uh, your heads up display is functional. Very, very fantastic stuff. Um, again, stats online are actually quite crucial. <laughs> uh, the storm tables were playing a bit more intuitively, general ranges, stuff like that, because we don't have the exact stats in real time. So what does this look like when a mid stack here or short stack shoves for the 29 big blinds? Well, in this case, we would be his villain and our call if we're just gonna call that shove, right, um, flat, is gonna be basically 44.63%, 40, let's call it 46% with the rake. And yeah, when we do call that, you know, the pot's gonna be 12.10 and 11.50 after, after the rake. So this guy, when he shoves and we get called, he's gonna need just over 50%, including the rake, just under 50% without it. We, on the other hand, need, with the rake, about 45, 46% to make that call flat, to basically call his three bet shove as a re-steal. And that really makes things tight. <laughs> so 45, let's call it 46%, well, what's a 46% range versus certain, uh, certain shove scenarios? Let's say the mid stacker is shoving pairs of sevens are better, ace jack, or king queen, as a general rule, anytime he's facing a steal. And yeah, where is 40, there's 47% all the way, nines are better as a pair. Basically ace, queen suited are better is just good enough. And that's it guys. That's it. So basically, basically the flat there is ace, queen or ace, queen or better. And any pair of nines are better. And that gives you, yeah, effectively the, the break even percentage that you need here at 46. So that's, yeah, that's scenario one. Um, he could be or she could be shoving that a bit lighter here. Sevens are, sevens are better. Ace nine, king jack. In which case, yeah, you can get all the way down to ace jack for a call and not much better than that. Um, yeah, and as you go yeah, further to the right then, of course you can call with wider ranges, but in general, I don't see these guys shoving with much worse than this right here, absolute worst here, which means our calls versus three bet shows for mid stacks need to be right at nines are better, tens are better, or ace queen, ace queen offsuit is better. <laughs> Maybe ace jack suited, but again, you're just flipping uh, against even that really wide range. So it's a tight spot, and that's you know that's why those short and mid stack shows are so effective. So yeah, again, I think we'll be you know when we're facing those, we're going to be calling just be on the safe side. Nines are better, ace queen, ace queen are better for for a wash. And yeah, plus minus zero EV, more or less. So yeah, just wanted to mention that, guys. That's what that looks like when you when you make a steel raise here and get re-raised all in versus a small stack. There's another scenario, which is also pretty interesting, which is right here. And that's essentially when you raise it up, all right? You raise it up 3x, as you do here. And the small stacker, the mid stacker, only makes a standard re-raise to nine big blinds. So he's in the big, he raises it up, then you raise it to 3x, right? You raise it 60 cents. Small stacker re-raises all the way up to 160. All right, so a total of 180, including his big blind is then nine, exactly nine big blinds. The effective stack when we start the round is at six bucks. All right, we've already posted, or basically raised, right, a 3x steal right here for 60 cents. There's not gonna be any dead money once you subtract the rake. Yeah, given the small stack sizes. And we're putting ourselves to be <laughs> totally, totally uh, safe at 40%. How much do we need our opponent to fold in order to break even in an expected value calculation? Well, the minimum fold equity for an EV0 push, basically a four bet push over the top, is 25%. That means that the small stacker who re-raised, right, who re-steals, up to nine big blinds, has to fold at least one fourth of his entire range for us to be plus minus EV zero with a total assumed equity versus his entire three bet shove range 
of 40%. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much the, the mathematical background to that. And I won't go into too much more detail, but 40% when we shove over the top for a four bet is going to be, you know, we could, let's take this example again here. He's basically three betting this. And he doesn't shove this time, but he just makes a normal or a standard raise to nine big blunts. And we can then shove over the top for basically sevens or better. Sevens or better. Or again, we're looking at maybe ace jack here better. And probably also we could find a shove with king queen suited and not much more. So that's yeah, that's how that looks, guys. And again, for that, let's look quickly at poker stove just to, just to analyze that. Let's say that uh, this player is in again on 11% range, which is somewhere between these two. Uh, he's basically three betting, sixes are better, ace 10, O, ace 8. Suit is probably a bit too light. Let's do, let's do this. Let's put him on 10% exactly. For sixes are better, ace 9 suited, uh, king queen, and ace 10 are better. All suited. All right, he raises it up, and then we shove with this range. Basically, eight a better, ace jack, or ace 10 suited. Let's throw in the king and queen suited to see what that looks like. All right, and here we go. We're at actually 55% versus his entire range, if that's correct. Now, if he's not three betting that wide, let's say he's three betting something more like this, <laughs> for exactly the same range. Uh, let's say queen are out of there. There you go, five percenter, and now we're behind. However, we are still within the range when we make the last aggressive move as a four bet shove, right? For having that forty percent equity that we need to break even in the long run, and actually we'll be a slight uh, positive EV favorite in the very very long run if that's if that's essentially yeah his his three bet three bet range. And then, yeah, when he folds, let's say he folds, probably only that. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna be 40% versus his calling range. So yeah, that's, yeah, it may be a bit too math intensive. I apologize for that if it is, but I needed to show you guys that because we are seeing a lot of um, mid and small stack pushes, stuff like that, especially pre-flop. And if you're not used to those kind of moves, then yeah, this, this scenario, I think this overview is very, very useful. For you guys to maybe pause the video, look at that a couple times, play with it a bit, and yeah, then adjust your play accordingly at the live tables. And the very final point is what you guys aren't going to see in the active screen. That's going to be basically my holder manager graph. And for all the all of you who are using this program, I would advise having that up during your play, especially when you've got it auto set to basically buy you back into the table maximum every time you drop underneath the hundred big blind mark. Uh, it's very important also to see how you're running here. We've got it. We're going to display it in big blinds, and then with showdown winnings, maybe also all in EV. And I'll show you guys how that works in um, after after a few hands here, and uh, we'll probably then do a stats review at the end of this two-handed uh, or two-table session. So this will be running in the background here on a different different screen, just so you guys know that's that's what's going on. And actually, just real quickly. Um, yeah, I'll play a few hands and then and then jump back so that you guys can see exactly how yeah how these graphs then are generated. All right, and we're off, guys. Seventy six. Fold that out. Jackson. JJ Dynamite under the gun. Raise it up. Three X here. And again, guys, you guys you can vary that between three and four X. Ace flops. Take a half pot. C bet shot at it. Uh, we get flatted, never a good thing. Check one in position, pot control. He could have missed his flush roll if he were on one. And yeah, we don't want to see a bet here. He checks it. I'm not going to I'm not going to bet this. Uh, I don't see him calling me down with the worst hand, so I'm just going to check behind. And we take that down. All right, so we're playing the two tables here, guys, and you're seeing the speed folds, um, which really increase the total number of hands that you're going to see per hour, as opposed to yeah, a typical ring game. Again, yeah, disadvantage is that we don't have the HUD um, functional in real time. Stats. 
real time stats. AJ here on the cutoff will definitely raise up. Tin King suited also as a steel raise if it's folded to us. And three exit. And that's a small stacker that we're talking about here at six bucks. Or mid stacker, however you want to define it. 30 big blinds. These two are relatively big stacks. A6. Now, if it's folded around to us, we'll take a shot here at the steel. And it's not, so we're just going to let that go. Weak A. It's not even suited. Forget about it. About 24, it's unexpected. We might complete here or take a shot just as a bluff. Yeah, why not? Let's raise one up here as a bluff. Take it down. And again, you know, with the stats, you can do that very, very precisely. Um. But here we're, <laughs> again, playing statistically blind. A little more intuitive. Um, yeah, trust in your instincts. Pick up aces. And after this, we'll sit one out so that I, I can show you guys. He checks. We make a c-bet here with the threes. Small stack player. We don't want to check raise there for sure. Ace is very good. So we can now squeeze this here. This guy open raise. There's a flat on the button. We squeeze this player. He comes over the top, perfect result. We want to see another shove here. <laughs> All right, we auto call that. Get it in 80% ahead. And. All right, aces hold. 78, swing and a miss here. If he checks, we'll take a shot here, represent the jack. C bet on the flop. We bet half pot guys again. I'll mention this probably a thousand times before the series out. Whenever you make a half pot bet, your opposition only has to fold one time in three for you to break even in the long run. He check calls and then checks again. I don't want to haul off again, although he may be on the flush draw. We'll just check behind here. There's Jax there. Jax up on the board. Uh, he would have missed his hard draw if he's on one. If he checks again, I'd definitely take a shot. But if he bets into us, yeah, we just let that go. So how does that look on our graph? We refresh that. And we see that the blue line here, guys, is your basically your showdown winnings. That's all the way up to here. And we've played 30, 30 hands already here in like, what, just a couple minutes. And that's only at two tables. So our non-showdown winnings plus minus nothing. And here we go. That's the actual green line is your winnings as such expressed as big blinds here. And what you can also do is display all on EV. And that means expected value. And this is only the case for when you go in, you go all in pre-flop, uh, pre on the flop, or on the turn. That means you're all in before the river in a heads-up pot. And that's where this line, this expected value line, will show you how you're performing when you're actually shoving before the river. And yeah, get it all in. That's, that shows you that actually we won this, right, with our aces versus the jacks. But in the long run, those jacks are going to pick up that pot one time in five, right, because they're more or less 18 19%. Uh, equity versus our aces and yeah that shows how we're gonna perform in that spot approaching infinity hope that's clear so yeah this is expressed as big blinds and you can also do it as US dollars which we're playing in and we're currently up here at 13 13 bucks so again guys this is um this is on the other screen I'll just keep that up that's how I play uh, I've always got this kind of as a barometer <laughs> of how the sessions going and yeah again three Three stack, four stack loss limit is what I like to adhere to. And if I if I really have a good run, then um, you know then I'll up my loss limit to yeah somewhere below that so that I leave the session a winner. With that, guys, we're just going to kick it off and get full on into the action. Raise that up as a steal. Do get flatted. We're in position here. He checks it. Let's check one behind here and opt for a delayed c-bet. We get another check, we know that, uh, okay, probably a good idea. <laughs> so he, he then donks into us on the turn, and we could flat that and then take a shot on the river, but again, no stats. What are you gonna do? Definitely not off suit. There's queen. And yeah, depending depending on the position, depending on your, uh, your general feeling, uh, you guys should make your open raise between, again, three and four x in general. 
Um, some players, when they're when they're steel raising from the small, they'll make it a bit bigger than they normally would with the with the steel raise, just because they have that that positional disadvantage post flop. Uh, let's just limp one, see what he does. Ah, bummer. All right, fivesies, and again, let's let's go ahead and limp call one here, uh, just to show you guys that instead of raising that up all the time, you can also just limp that with these speculative hands here in AP. Oh, <laughs> he makes a really hefty raise here. And the thing is, the 160, again, 10 times out of 9 times that, let's call it 10 for simplicity, 16 bucks, and I have that for set value. So I'm going to go ahead and flat that, looking for the 5 here. I don't want to get re-raised by this guy. Yeah, we, we miss, um, but again, yeah, yeah, he should bet that right now. Yeah, he does good. Um, we could flat that for a float, but yeah, that's, again, if you're, if you're making that kind of call, that limp call line, you're looking for that five, no set, no bet. We let it go and play on. And again, you don't you don't make that flat versus small stack players, right? You only make that flat versus versus big stack players, or at least players where you have a, about nine times the amount to call. And it was a bit risky because there was a guy behind us that could have pushed over the top, and in that case, actually the fives we could have just limp folded um, for the chance that the mid stack and small stacker shoves behind us. No biggie, but with that call, especially with the over call, we were priced in really, really well. And swing and a miss, you know what happens. Play on. Again, consider it one big session, guys. Play your first hand like you play your last, and you'll be doing this fun. 8, 9, 10, nada. Out the door. Ace, 9, he gives it to us. And 3. You guys have seen already with two tables how, how fast this is. Wow, man, that's I think that's the third or third pair of aces inside of five or ten minutes. <laughs> Every uh, 221, 222 hands basically, you'll be dealt a pair of aces, and and uh, we caught it I guess three times here inside of ten minutes. Uh, pretty intense. Unfortunately, we haven't had a lot of a lot of play with it. This is actually a good pot with our aces. We want this guy to come over the top with kings. Ah, on his shove there. Uh, we get it in again for eighty percent. Good, we got the ace block in that. Oh, not nice, tens. <laughs> oh, mercy. That's called variance, guys. Yeah, he hit one of the few outs he had there on the river. Uh, we got it in as an 80% favorite. Gets sucked out, it happens. Here we've got, yeah, mid pair. Make a C bet after the check on the high board and take it down. Yeah, that's it, guys, right? I mean, we got it in with aces versus jacks and aces versus tens. One time we won, one time we lost. Approaching infinity, we're going to win four times in five with that matchup. When we do that, just a million times say. So. Uh, Ace-Queen is not a call versus a shove after an EP raiser. Ace-King, yeah, so picking up some decent hands. Um, yeah, bummer with that Ace-Bad beat, but it happens. And that is a three bet. Alrighty, so... Back to our flush draw. Jack is, of course, real nice. And, yeah, I'm actually not going to bet in the guy on the button. Yep, and if, you know, if we had two hearts or two diamonds here, I'd, I'd find a call here, maybe even a raise as a bluff. Semi-bluff, semi-bluff raise, but here I got to let that go. And as is always the case, guys, if for some reason we, we get into a stall scenario like that, um, where guys are just taking a long time to consider, or they're you know, thinking about it, whatever, I will pause the video and then jump back and forth uh, as we get into playable hands. So you guys have seen yeah, the flow of the game now here with the speed folds and yeah, we are picking up some pretty intense hands um, initially in the session, but not a whole lot of profit as of yet. There's a 3-bet re-steal. More or less three times in a bit, his raise. He flats, we whiff, <laughs> and we yeah take a half pot shot here to represent the over pair. And he lets it go. Uh, here then ten times that is five bucks. So we've also got the flat with our eights. You can also just re-raise that directly, but with the small stacks again, expect the four bet push a lot. And he bets it out here at the 127. 
And I'm going to go ahead and put him on over cards and shove right now. Ace king, ace queen, <laughs> or aces. And yeah, we got it in bad on that one. Bummer. Uh, we'll raise up the ace queen here under the gun. Uh, here we'll check, maybe check raise. We haven't done that yet. As a bluff. And again, you really need stats on your players, read stuff like that to make these kind of moves, but yeah. We're playing a little wacky, wild storm style, and it's working out. All right, 46 here again, 2, 4, 6, 7 to 1. This is an absolute nonsense hand, but for the miracle versus three players, relatively big, uh, big stacks here at least. And we do flop the open in a straight draw, and we donk for a couple reasons. See my bluff bet, right? Um, building the pot. When we hit, we're going to have a bigger pot. Now I can hopefully, with my bet there on the flop, get two cards for the price of one. That's the idea. And or he can price me in here from open in a straight draw. Why not? Uh, we miss, and that's unfortunate because we could have picked up the rest of his stack here with uh, probably any eight, any three. Bummer. The only way I can take this down is with a bet. I don't see him folding, however. So timeout. Yeah, man, he showed his sixes. This. I mean, once he gets that far, guys, small stakes. Uh, forget it. Any pair is good enough. <laughs> and yeah, it's just highly unlikely that they're going to fold that down. Alright, so we raise it up here on the button with the ace three. We do flop our ace inside straight draw. Um, it's checked to us, and go ahead and make a half pot bet here in position after the checks, and take it down. Good result with the baby ace. We re-raise uh, with the ace queen here again on the button, and he lets it go. And this guy's is variance in real time. So the green line is actually what we've won. So we're just at, um, let's see here, 12 big blinds at this point. <laughs> and actually, according to according to our play, and we did get it in really far behind with our pair eights versus the aces at one time. However, he was, yeah, again, smaller stacked. And so the red line illustrates where we should be on the times, again, that we pushed pre-river. So we should be at 48... Yeah, 49 big blinds here, given our expected value and shoves. However, we're only at 11, uh, 12, and that's variance, guys. That, that's how it, that's how it happens from time to time. Played 121 hands here in our two table session, and we're back at it. Ace tens also a fold versus uh, none of the gun raises the offsuit. And again, I mean, you can you can get away with a lot of stuff, guys, when you have real stats, uh, high sample size on your opposition. But as you guys see here, we're playing without the HUD, without the stats. So for all intents and purposes, playing blind. And yeah, as I had mentioned in the previous videos, um, for those of you who are playing the Storm Tables as your primary game, what you'll definitely want to do is a um, little pre-session work, uh, post-session and pre-session work, actually, uh, analyzing different players, Basically trying to commit to memory, um, the name, stuff like that, how they're, how they're playing, how they're performing. Again, yeah, looking at looking at their performance in your database after the fact. And then kind of preparing, maybe have a list of names of, of fish, really good players, stuff like that. Categorize it and have that at your side for your sessions. I'm at this point a little too lazy. <laughs> and yeah, I'm not going to go into that kind of detail, but that's that's what you what you should do. If yeah, if you're looking to play this in a very professional manner, uh, here with our over cards, that's no longer any good. And it's it's also kind of difficult because of the speed to tag your players, uh, make notes, stuff like that in real time. So it's it's got to be a uh, it's got to be a post session post session work that you got to really put in the time for, in order to yeah, have those reads and be able to mouse over or at least know the person's name uh, when you're actually in the yeah, in the real-time sessions. 54 from a small stack. Here, I'm just going to flat one. And donk out. That's called a stop and go, or where you flat the pre-flop pre -flop bet and then basically bet into the pre-flop aggressor on the flop. And here, we'll let that go. And we're going to double up on that because it didn't change anything. We also pick up the, in or the outside straight draw to boot, which is very good, and we'll call that for sure. Nice. That's 
Uh, Jack Jackson plays, doesn't he? Very nice. And so you see here the queen eight. I mean, that was a small stack player. That we're not dealing with small stack professionals all the time, or mid stack professionals. Yeah, the queen eight like that. Okay, he flopped top pair, I guess. But again, it's not that really tight, tight uh, range or calling range that, that I was showing you guys here at the beginning of the video. Uh, rather, yeah, queen eight. So yeah, just know that that's that's also possible. Yeah, you know, there's normally a big difference. You, you either have a um, small or mid stack pro or a small mid stack fish buying in for the smallest um, table amount and yeah, trying their luck, so to say. All right, we raise up this limp pot. And you know, generally four times the big blind plus one per limper as a general rule is good to adhere to. He limp flats. And that's his entire stack size. Um, doubtful he has a queen. We just shove, given his remaining stack size equal to the pot. Again, guys, it's Dylan from mybet.com. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please feel free to contact us at any time.